drill press, you grab a hold of a handle and you pull down and the quill comes down and brings the bit with it and it drills a hole. With this one, you push on a foot pedal and let me move this out of the way so you can see. And when you push the foot pedal, look what happens to the drill bit. It emerges through the fence and bores a hole, okay? Now, this little piece here, this handle, you can see that it's cam-shaped. It's not perfectly round. And so what we can do, the instructional staff can adjust this fence if needed so that when this comes in contact, it holds the work firmly down on the table and it can't move by accident. I'm going to suggest to you that it's easiest to drill the holes that are going to go in the edges of a board so that you can learn how the machine feels before you try to drill the holes that go in the ends of the boards because the ones that are going to go in the ends can be just a little bit fussier to drill. Okay, and for two reasons. One reason is because you're drilling here in edge grain, and here you're drilling in end grain. But the other reason is because when you're drilling in the edge of a board, the entire width of the fence supports the workpiece. When you're drilling in the end, there's a possibility that the piece could move and tip, and then you end up with a crooked hole. Okay, so I'm going to save these two where you drill the holes in the ends for last. And I'm going to suggest you do the same thing. If you look at the top of this wooden fence, there's a little pencil line and it, and it indicates where the bit's going to emerge. And so what I'm going to suggest we do is line up the hole that you've drawn on your part with the pencil line. And then take this piece and put it over the top. Because if you try and clamp it here, the drill bit can push the piece away from the fence. By having to clamp it clamp on top, it's more likely to hold it in place where the force is applied by the drill bit. Make sense? And so this leather here gives it a good grip, and I'm going to hold it in position, turn on the motor, and I don't want to just take the, grip, the foot pedal and push it all the way down to the floor, because I need to provide the machine with an opportunity to eject the chips. So I'm going to sneak up on it a little bit by a little bit. is safely behind the fence, unless I do something silly, it's going to be really difficult for me to injure myself, so I don't have to turn it off and move the position the pencil on it. What I do want to make sure I do is make sure that I don't have any sawdust or chips on the table at the end of the table to the fence, because those can hold the work piece on with that pencil mark once again, clamp the piece of, piece of place. Now that's two. How many holes do I have to drill, Bill? Uh, depends on your clock, doesn't it? Yeah, so for me, I'm going to drill eight, but if you do an arch clock, ten. Okay. So position this so that the holes are lined up. Position this one so the holes lined up. Now you can see because I made no effort at all to measure to determine the location of the holes. If I didn't have these components labeled A, A, B, C, C, D, 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 it wouldn't go together the same way in each corner. So if I mix them up, my ends would go on the spot. That's one of the reasons why I want to make absolutely certain that I have all this part labeled. So that's the four holes that we're going to be drilling in edge grain. Now it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And as you can see, those holes end up centered on the midline of the stock, exactly where you want them to be. Now I'm going to do the other ones. And these are going to be the holes that go in the end grain. And so my technique with those, drilling is the same, but I have one added feature. I take a square. Can I pass this around? Sure. I have a square. I line my pencil mark, and then I put the square up against the fence and the workpiece to guarantee that this piece hasn't cocked off crooked somewhere, okay? And now, when I bring this clamp in position, before I go to drill, I'm going to look at that square, I'll put it over here so you can get it for your video, to make sure that the piece is absolutely perpendicular to the fence before I try and bore the hole. So I'm going to fire it back up and do the same operation. You see who? So end grain drills differently than facing edge grain. So don't 
Filipinos to expect the same results under different circumstances. Just as when you're looking at the table saw, your eye is always at the intersection of the work and the distance. When I'm drilling holes in the end grain of the horizontal boring machine, my eye is at the intersection of the square and the workpiece to make sure that this thing isn't cocking crooked as I'm forcing, put it, applying force to the end of the drill bit. Make sense? So now I can flip it around, get rid of the sawdust, align my pencil lines, Bring my clamp down so that it's holding it securely in position. Make sure that I have a square there so that as I start to step on the pillow, the clip is walking up to stop and the line apart. Soda straws aren't parallel to those edges you so carefully saw on, and you're not paying attention to see if your workpiece is perpendicular to the fence and you don't have ample clamp pressure here, you can end up with a hole that's going right up the edge here that's crooked, and that can ruin your whole day. So if I have done this correctly, where are the pieces that we passed around? Thank you. If I've done this correctly, I should be able to align a, A, B, B, C, C, D, D. So I have a B here and a B here. A and B won't match? Mm -hmm. That's why we always do a dress rehearsal here in a second. Um, when we go to glue this up, it's going to be a completely different kettle of fish. Oh my gosh, what happened? What happened? I've got a C with a D, don't I? Okay. So. You need to pay attention to this while you're mocking up, and you also need to pay attention to this while you're gluing up. Because I have seen people do everything right until they smeared the glue on the pieces, and as we know, glue changes everything. And they've actually glued up a door. They were more concerned with squeeze out than they were with A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D. And they ended up with a piece that wasn't perfect. Now look at that piece, it still spins like a rotisserie chicken. Now, what do I see here that I don't like? I have a gap right here, yeah. don't I? Why would I have a gap? Because your bottom piece is a little bit longer than the top piece. Maybe the rails are different length. Well, it could be another explanation. The hole's not deep enough. The depth of the hole or the length of the dowel. So I need to verify that everything is going to work right before I apply glue to anything. Okay? And I need to resolve the issue. Now, one of the simple things I could do is just remove this dowel and shorten it. That would, that would solve the problem. But just because I shorten the dowel doesn't necessarily mean that the piece is going to go together properly. I need to double check before I glue things together to make sure that not only are all the joints nice and tight, where did I put my square, but that after the glue is dry, these are all 90 degree corners. Because once the glue is dried, it's too late to make a change. Once the glue is dried, instead of making a change, you're going to make a new door. Make sense? Any questions? Okay, let's, let's go out in the lab real quickly. And I will show you 